From your local source, WCJB TV 20, this is TV 20 News at 6. Two more people have been injured from a leaping sturgeon along the Suwannee River. Good evening. Florida Fish and Wildlife officials say one man and one woman were injured by jumping sturgeon in Lafayette County. And TV 20's Alex Browning joins us now live from UF Health Shands where the couple was transported. Alex. Dave, Paige, Nick, and Jamie Bradley are in the emergency room here at U of Health Shands tonight after their boat crossed paths with a jumping sturgeon in Lafayette County. FWC officials and Lafayette Sheriff's deputies responding to a call around 1130 this morning after the couple and their three children were on their boat when both parents were struck. Nick was airlifted to U of Health Shands. Jamie transported by ground. Family members tell me Nick was hit in the head and Jamie in the face. The three children were not injured. They were at home tonight with their grandmother. Law enforcement officials tell me it happened between the Branford boat ramp and Troy Springs Park. The family says no one was on the bow of the boat and speed wasn't a factor. They were going about 15 miles per hour. Hospital workers here at U of Health Shands say both are in stable condition. Nick's brother says he will be uh, staying the night tonight in observance because he suffered a concussion. Jamie is expected to be released later tonight. Now they both are the seventh and eighth people to be injured by a surgeon this year. And of course, one was a fatal accident two weeks ago. Jaylon Rippey's funeral was Saturday in Chiefland. She was hit and killed by a sturgeon about two weeks ago. We're live at U of Health Shands tonight. Alex Browning, TV 20 News. If you're a customer, then you know Gainesville has one of the highest electric bills in the state, but GRU officials say they hope to change that with their new proposed budget. Officials with the utility say the changes may be coming to customers' bills next year. TV 20's Nico Clements tells us some customers' bills would go up and some would go down. Dave, commissioners say it's no question the biomass contract that was signed six years ago has had a great impact on customers' bills, but GRU officials are proposing a small decrease in next year's electric rates. It's really crushing the citizens and the ratepayers in Gainesville. Debbie Martinez was just one of a few Monday who voiced their opinion about GRU and its high electric bills. The electric rates won't be going up, but the total GRU bill will. But I agree with uh, Mayor Brady. Things could be a lot worse given the bad 30-year Greg biomass contract. In their proposed fiscal year 2016 budget, GRU officials recommend lowering the rates for electricity, but raising the rates for water, wastewater, and natural gas. That means customers who use low amounts of electricity, their bills would go up, and those who use higher amounts of energy, their bills would go down. We always want to minimize our rate increases. Uh, the thing that we have to do, though, is a community-owned organization. We make sure we have to make sure that we're adequately covering our expenses and taking care of our systems. And we believe that we're going to be able to do that with the rates that are in in place. And we're uh, proposing fairly moderate rate increases. $408 million would be the cost to operate the utility in fiscal year 16. City commissioners say they continue to face the challenge of the biomass contract that was signed and how much of a significant impact that has had on fuel adjustment price that all customers pay. People have, uh, have done a good job conserving their water use, both from a uh, you know, budgetary standpoint for homes, as well as I think people that are trying to conserve the resource. And, you know, the challenge when you have a situation like that is that it's a you know, very high fixed cost business. Chase says over the last two years, the city commission has taken aggressive steps to flatline the larger rate increases that were planned, and it's something that's not going to happen overnight. While some customers' uh, bills may go up a little bit next year, uh, I, th I think it's progress in the, in the direction that, that we've been, been trying to take. Now, GRU staff just finished meeting with City Commission. They will, be, they will come back next Tuesday with other options for commissioners to review. If the proposed budget gets approved, rate changes will go into effect October 1st. Nico Clements, TV20 News. We can always use some free water from Mother Nature. <laughs> and we got some, at least part of North Central Florida did today, Bill. Uh, yeah, the rain moving in pretty early back over in Levy County and Marion County and now pushing off to the east. But we also have some storms coming in from the north. Uh, take a look at temperature. We've actually jumped up quite a bit from 82 to 87 because the sunshine returning to areas of north central Florida, especially Latchwood County. South winds at 5 at the Gainesville Region Airport. Humidity is at 72 percent. Looking at the radar satellite composite, you see those showers uh, blossoming earlier this afternoon and pushing off to the east. 
enhanced with our east, uh, west coast sea breeze, but not much of an east coast sea breeze today, but we're still looking at showers and thunderstorms developing generally to the north. Most of the activity from the earlier storms is pushed off the east coast, but stronger thunderstorms back up to the north, north of Lake City and just along the Suwannee River now. Uh, affecting folks in uh, White Spring is going to continue to push off towards the off to the south as this continues to move in that direction at about 30 miles an hour, moving pretty quickly, and it has pretty much collapsed. We're looking at the possibility of some damaging winds in that area. There is a significant weather advisory for Columbia County and also Hamilton County, and uh, I don't think we have one for Suwannee County as yet. Oh, there it is, just popped in there. So we'll be watching that wind field pushing off to the south. So be aware that there is a possibility of some stronger thunderstorms to the north and hit and miss here and there. Elsewhere across north central Florida, temperatures dropping back a bit, but we're going to see things drop back in a big way over the next seven days. All that in your forecast in just a few minutes. Three more arrests have been made in a local human trafficking case. A federal official says early Saturday morning, Raynell Carter Jr. was arrested and charged with two counts of child sex trafficking. He was arrested during a traffic stop and identified as a fugitive based on a pending indictment. Now, he's currently being held in the Alachua County Jail. Also arrested in the same sex trafficking case, Carter's co-defendants, Hal Black and Tawanda Burkett. They face one count each. Black and Burkett are now in federal custody. Last week, another man, Michael Hayes, was arrested in Gainesville in this same case after an FBI raid on a house on Southeast 20th Street. Both Carter and Hayes face a hearing this Friday at the federal courthouse in Gainesville. A $15,000 reward is being offered for information leading to the arrest of an arsonist who set multiple wildfires in the Rosewood area of Levy County. About 20 fires were started in the early morning hours on June 28th. The fire damaged resources on some privately owned property and is currently under investigation. Fire safety officials in Levy County say the suspects walk through committing setting fires in a couple of different areas of the forest. Hard to believe somebody would set this many fires, endangering the lives of firefighters and destroying, you know, natural resources that belong to private property and, and state and federal government. The Florida Forest Service has posted a message on Facebook asking anyone for information to please come forward. Two men are up a creek without a boat motor after officers say they were interrupted in the middle of a burglary. Felix Morgan and Kenyatta Patterson were arrested after the Gainesville Police Department got a call about two people at the Tiffany apartment complex trying to take a mo motor from a boat. Officers found bolt cutters, adjustable wrenches, and signs of tampering in the motor section of the boat. Morgan and Patterson told officers they threw the tools down when they saw the officers but denied trying to steal the motor. It is what some are calling the end of an era for U at UF Health Shands. After more than 20 years with Shands, Dr. Edward Staples is retired from his post as a full-time cardiothoracic surgeon with the hospital. Edwards is considered by many as a pioneer in the lung and heart fields, even beginning the first lung transplant program in the state of Florida. Today, fellow doctors and employees joined Edwards to wish him luck. All of the people here are wonderful to work with. And, uh, it's a very, very rewarding uh, career. Dr. Edwards is still working full-time at the VA hospital, but says he plans to fully retire in the next two to five years. Coming up, a popular North Central Florida landmark is expecting a major budget cut. Coming up after the break, we'll tell you how its staff plans to keep it afloat. Coming up on the TV20 News at 6.